In this video of ink pot, we are going to be learning about Hicks and Slutsky decomposition of a Cobb Douglas. We're going to be focusing a lot more on Slutsky, but Hicks we also have to do to be able to compare the two. And sometimes you get a question in the exams for Hicks and Slutsky comparison as well. But we're going to focus on Slutsky a lot more than Hicks because Slutsky is the main thing that you get asked in exams. So 90% of the times we get a question on Slutsky, it's only that 10% of the times that we get a question on Hicks. Suppose we have a simple Cobb Douglas u is equal to x y and we have a simple budget line 2x plus 5y is equal to 100. For the sake of convenience, I've taken numbers, but you could always assume any budget line p1x plus p2y is equal to m. Before I actually go on to the analysis, I want to focus on what is price effect, what is substitution effect, and what is income effect. So, what is price effect? When price of a good changes let's suppose when price of good one falls it always quantity rising for a normal good right we know that so economists say that this relation happens because of because of something which is a hidden you know because of two effects which are hidden which is substitution effect and income effect so as a consumer he doesn't know that he's having these two effects it's as economists that we want to figure out that he has these two effects substitution effect and income effect what is the difference income effect is a normal income effect income effect is the effect that you have is the change in consumption that you have because of change in purchasing power it doesn't have to be nominal income it can be real income as well so it is the change in the consumption that you have because of change in purchasing power right so given your prices are constant given that your prices are constant if you have a change in purchasing power and you change the consumption of either or both the goods, that's income effect. What is substitution effect? If your real income, if your real purchasing power is held constant and there is a change in the consumption of X and Y because of change in prices, that's called a substitution effect. So this happens only because of change in prices. And this happens because of change in purchasing power, right? And when P1 is falling, then with the same income, now I can definitely afford more goods of good one and two both. That is income effect, right? So what is substitution effect? Let's study in detail again. When P1 is falling, what is happening? My P1 by P2 is also falling, right? Remember, my equilibrium condition in a Cobb Douglas is MRS is equal to P1 by P2, which means now I can't consume at the same MRS. My MRS also has to fall wherever I'm consuming. If my MRS has to fall, it means my MUX upon MUY, the whole thing has to fall, which means essentially my MUX is falling and MUY is rising, which happens when your X consumption increases and your Y consumption falls which implies that when P1 falls only because of the changes in prices keeping real income constant. How do I know my real income is constant? Because we haven't spoken about real income at all. It could be constant, right? So it is constant. Even if my real income is constant, then when I increase X, even when my real income is constant, when I increase X, because my real income is constant, I have to reduce Y right because my real income is constant if my real income wasn't constant i could very well increase x without changing y but that's not the case the case is that when my real income is constant then when i'm increasing x my money has to come some from somewhere to increase x no where does the money come from from reducing y agar main ek good badha rahi hu to uske liye jo zyada paisa chahiye wo kahan se aayega dusre good ko kam karke so when i increase x my y falls so this is called substitution effect this is called substitution effect. What is the other effect? When P1 is falling, my real income, my real purchasing power is rising, which means, which means what? Even with the same nominal income, I'm able to afford more. And if I can afford more, I will buy more of normal goods. Now this effect is same as any normal good effect. So if it was not normal but inferior, I would say I, I, I can afford more but I will now buy less of a inferior good. I will buy less of a given good but I will definitely buy more of a normal good, right? So this is my substitution and my income effect. 
Now, how do I apply it in a question? Let's take a moment here. When we have a substitution effect, my purchasing power is constant. It's not actually happening. So you can't go and ask the consumer कि आपकी purchasing power कहाँ constant है. ये हमें assume करना पड़ता है. ये हमें determine करना पड़ता है. So Hicks and Slutsky did not differ on the definitions of substitution and income effect. What they did differ was on the approach as to how to keep purchasing power constant. I'll reiterate myself. When we study two approaches, Hicks and Slutsky, तो हम ये नहीं बोल रहे हैं कि दोनों के लिए equilibrium change हो जाएगा, E not change हो जाएगा, E one change हो जाएगा, नहीं होगा, वो same रहेगा। हम क्या बोल रहे हैं? दोनों को पता था कि price effect is a combination of substitution and income effect। दोनों ये बात मानते हैं कि substitution effect तब आता है जब purchasing power constant होती है, और income effect तब आता है जब P one by P two constant होता है। Then where do they two differ? They two differ on how we can keep purchasing power constant and you could agree to each logic it's not about your agreement it's about your understanding of both so we are not saying Hicks is right, Slutsky is wrong, Slutsky is wrong, Hicks is wrong we are not saying any of those things what are we saying? we are saying that both have their approach, both have their style we have to understand that both have their approach so having said that let's understand the difference in the two approaches Slutsky has said that कि अगर परचेजिंग पावर कांस्टेंट है तो मैं उतना ही बंडल कंज्यूम कर पाऊंगा अफोर्ड कर पाऊंगा जितना मैं पहले ही कर पा रहा था अगर मैं उस ओरिजिनल बंडल से ज़्यादा अफोर्ड कर पा सकता हूँ तो मेरी परचेजिंग पावर बढ़ गई है और अगर मैं कम अफोर्ड कर पा सकता हूँ तो मेरी परचेजिंग पावर कम हो गई है फेर नफ सो स्लस्की सैड हाउ डू वी की परचेजिंग पावर कॉन्स्टेंट बाई मेकिंग द ओरिजिनल बंडल just affordable I have to make sure कि मेरा जो E0 है वो क्या है वो just affordable है just affordable का मतलब क्या है वो नई budget line के ऊपर आएगा अंदर या बाहर नहीं हो सकता it has to come right on the new budget line why because Slutsky says how do I keep purchasing power constant by making original bundle just affordable right let's practice the diagram we have the initial budget line AB, right? Let's assume P1 falls. We have the new budget line AB1. For the sake of convenience and for the sake of remembering, let's mark them. This is A, B, original budget line. This is AB1, which we get if P1 falls, right? So we can mark our original IC and new IC. Again, because we know that Slutsky and Hicks did not differ in their approach of how to calculate the equilibrium. So E0 and E1 for both Hicks and Slutsky remain the same. So E0 and E1 are not the points which I'm getting because of substitution and income effect. Hicks and Slutsky अलग अलग बातें कहाँ कर रहे थे परचेजिंग पावर कैसे कांस्टेंट रखना है उस पे उन्होंने ये नहीं बोला कि इक्विलिब्रम निकालने का कोई तीसरा तरीका होता है इक्विलिब्रम निकालने का तो वही तरीका होता है ना सो E0 and E1 virtually will get from the same method. What is the method? Tangency. Right, we've studied that before. So E0 and E1 remains the same for both Hicks and Slutsky. Where do they differ? They differ in their approach of purchasing power. So what did Slutsky say? Slutsky said to keep purchasing power constant. Slutsky said to keep purchasing power constant. What do we need to do? We need to make E0 just affordable right so which means my new budget line which is CD it should just pass through E0 my new budget line CD has to just pass through E0 and should be parallel to AB1 okay I'll say it again what is the rule to draw CD the rule to draw CD is it should be parallel to new budget line AB1 and it should pass through E0. The two, two points are parallel to AB1 and pass through E0. Let's see, let's draw that line. Right? So this is my blue line right here. If you see, it's passing through E0. It's passing through E0 and it is parallel to AB1. Let's call this line CD. Let's call this line DECD. And let's make an IC on this CD. And let's call this point E0 dash. So, for the understanding purpose, E0, E1 were marked before, 
so the movement from e naught to e naught dashes the substitution effect because you see it's making both the lines have e naught to be just affordable which means purchasing power is constant and cd and ab1 are parallel to each other which means that my prices are constant so the movement from e naught to e naught dash is substitution effect and the movement from e naught dash to e1 is income effect i hope that made sense you could actually view the video again for it to make much much more sense every time you view it you will be able to sort out these concepts even better in your head and once you've actually understood the diagram really really well i would urge you to finish this video and watch the numerical so once we've understood the diagram then the process of numerical calculation is much much easier the only thing we have to do is we have to understand that the point e naught and e1 is same for both Hicks and Slutsky. Why is it the same? Because Hicks and Slutsky did not differ in their approach on how to calculate E0 and E1. That's a general process given to us. They differed in their approach on how to keep the purchasing power constant. So what did Slutsky say? Slutsky said at point E0 dash, I'll, I'll mark this diagram. So this is E0, this point is E0 dash and E1 is somewhere here right so e naught point e naught that we've gotten is 25 comma 10 point e1 that we've gotten is 50 comma 10 we need to calculate what is point e naught dash for slutsky so for slutsky we say that u is equal to xy which is a standard function we've been taking so far subject to we're saying two reduces to one so we take the new price ratio we take the new price ratio and we take it equal to m dash m dash is the purchasing power on the line cd so cd has this equation of x plus 5y is equal to m dash right i don't know what m dash is but i know that m dash is passing through point e naught so i can figure out my income at e naught and that income is the income at on the throughout of this line cd right how do i do that i know the point e naught e naught is 25 comma 10. So I have to find M dash, which makes 25 comma 10 just affordable. So in this budget line, I put X to be equal to 25 and Y to be equal to 10. I get my income of 75. So once I know M dash is 75, then I know how to calculate the rest of the thing. So this is 37.5 comma 7.5. That's a Slutsky numerical for us. Let's review it one more time slowly, shall we? E naught, same procedure. E1, same procedure whatever we've been doing so far e naught dash you take the new price ratio and unknown income how do you find the unknown income you make the point e naught just affordable so up e naught pay income nikal lete ho usi income ko aap m dash dal dete ho once you have that you maximize your utility function subject to the budget constraint matlab mrs is equal to the price ratio and you'll find e naught dash right so then how do I find out the substitution and income effect? Substitution effect is point E0 dash minus E0. And income effect is point E1 minus E0 dash. And you do this process for both X and Y. Right? Let's move on to Hicks. So when I'm doing Hicks, what is the difference between Slutsky and Hicks? The way they both keep purchasing power constant. Hicks says that if my purchasing power is constant, then my utility should be constant. Because if my purchasing power will change, then I can afford such a bundle of water where my utility will be more or less. So if my purchasing power is constant, then what does it mean? That my utility is constant. So for Hicks, making purchasing power constant means keep utility constant. Right? How do we draw that? We have the initial budget line AB, P1 falls, we move outward to AB1, this is my original E0, we have E1, we have the line CD, we have E1 and we have the line CD, which is obviously parallel to AB1 because they share the new price ratio, but it's actually is tangent to the same IC, the same IC where E0 lies, so E0 and E0 dash has to lie on the same utility curve which means my utility is constant at e naught and e naught dash that's the way hicks differentiated between substitution and income effect 
डेफिनेशन रिमेन्स द सेम ई नॉट ई वन सेम है फ़र्क क्या है सिर्फ और सिर्फ ई नॉट डैश का फ़र्क है राइट ना हार वी कैलकुलेट इट न्यूमेरिकली सो वी नो दैट यूटिलिटी इज इक्वल टू एक्स वाई वी नो दैट इट शुड भी सब्जेक्ट टू आई एम नॉट कैलकुलेट इन ई नॉट एंड ई वन हियर वी आर ओनली डूइंग द कैलकुलेशन फॉर ई नॉट डैश क्योंकि ई नॉट ई वन तो दोनों का सेम था ना तो अब मुझे चाहिए एम डैश एच और एम डैश एच क्या है एम डैश एच वहाँ पर है जहाँ पर यू जो है वो कॉन्स्टेंट है ई नॉट पे तो इसका मतलब द कॉन्स्ट्रेंट इज नॉट इनकम आई एम कॉन्स्ट्रेंट बाई माई यूटिलिटी सो आई कैन फिगर आउट माई यूटिलिटी एट ई नॉट इट्स टू फिफ्टी सो एक्स वाई इज इक्वल टू टू फिफ्टी सब्जेक्ट टू दिस और राधर मिनिमाइज दिस सब्जेक्ट टू दिस हाउ एवर यू वॉन्ट टू वर्क इट आउट यू कैन सॉल्व दिस इन दिस टूगेदर एंड यूल गेट दिस एज योर आंसर right so hicks and klatsky basic numerical we have done already in the later videos we actually try and do the same analysis for perfect substitutes perfect complements i we do uh, you know this this kind of decomposition effects for perfect complements quasi linears etc